I mean, family. Oh boy. Give me something to eat. Well, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> But you all, as you all start waking up, though, uh, you can see the initial light of the sun starting to come in. It seems like it's going to be another hot day outside. And you can see Clip Clop is still very much passed out in his bed. <laughs> Jenik will stride over and sort of rub his fist into his sternum. Wake him up. Uh, he seems to be just like completely passed out. You notice uh, a large bottle of booze next to him. Yeah. <laughs> ah, shit. Um, mm. Okay, load him up into the wagon. <laughs> Toss him in the back. That might, that might be a good choice. Uh the the chained old man looks over to you though. Ah, good morning, you simple fools. I'm glad you're all awake now. Uh, can you please release me from these chains? I need to scratch, and I haven't been able to scratch in ages. I uh, Jenik will search Clip Clop's pockets for a key. Alrighty, uh, I need you to... Uh, you're gonna make a flight of hand check. So that's, that's just a flat d20 roll. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Well, I rolled a five. Alright, you... You you look through his pockets, but you just can't really find anything. Like you are, you are digging through there, and you're just no, no just getting nothing. really in there, really in there. Yeah, it, it's it does not. You can't find the key anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yes, big oof. Uh, unfortunately, also, I can't find the key. Uh, <laughs> he's like, I don't know what to do from here. Um, <laughs> I could try and break the chains. Well, you could try, but at this moment, Atreus, you, you smell this wonderful, wonderful fresh baked bread smell coming from outside. Ooh. <clears throat> it smells delicious. Mm. Breakfast smells... must be getting made outside. It smells quite quite good. Like a, a sourdough almost. I'm going outside. <clears throat> I'm telling everybody I smell food. It smells like bagels. Mm. Bacon. As, as you start getting up to head outside, you all hear a loud call. Breakfast! Breakfast over in the main hall. Come and get her. Alright, then. As you all start heading outside to see, uh, before you get into the main building, <laughs> heading outside, you see uh, the guildman Marcus, uh, another mercenary looking man, and a couple of guards chatting in front of the door. And the old man does thank you, Chenik. The old man thanks you for that. And the, as you step outside, you also find that the sun seems particularly bright today. As it beams down, and for you... Catherine, it it seems it seems to be just just a little too bright for you. Is it's really really bright? Doctor leaves six digits for sunglasses at him. <laughs> <laughs> Sun goggles. Ooh. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it is so bright. Okay. It's a it's a very bright morning. Uh, Catherine will not leave the door frame then. Ah. Just gonna sit in that door. Gotcha. Well, from what you guys can see, the guildmaster, upon seeing you all exit your lodging, will walk over to you. Ah, good morning, my friends. Please come get some food inside, and then we will send. We can get you all onto the wagon and head out. As he beckons you inside, while the other mercenaries step back and Marcus steps forward towards you. And I can provide many good wares before we leave if you want. I will actually take you up on that. Mm, very good. Catherine will uh, mutter behind you if he's not selling you f false weapons again. That's a good point, actually. <laughs> Should he do it again? I'll have this other pinky. Wait, you took his pinky? <laughs> <laughs> she pulls out um, basically like a, bone, a picked clean bone like pinky and just holds it out. You disturb me sometimes, Catherine. <laughs> well, it wasn't like it wasn't deserved, but it did, and at this, it did as you two are arguing, arguing. <laughs> as you two are arguing, you hear another call. Breakfast, come on, come and get it before it gets cold. As the guildman turns to head inside. Okay, so I don't have. <clears throat> So it's too bright even for the cloak? No, you it just is a very bright day. The cloak is fine, but it's oh, particularly I, a bright I mis, morning. I misunderstood you then entirely. Okay. Yeah, I no. It's saying. it's just like really bright out. Okay. So okay, I see what you're saying. I totally misunderstood you. Um Catherine will walk out into the into the light and into the sunlight, but her head is further down than it normally is. Mark Marcus sees you walk out as as he's right about to talk to Chenik. Ah, I see the little miss is still here. Go get yourself some food, eh? If you keep up your antics, you will be my next meal. Gosh, a guy can't catch a break here, can he? Eh, Chenik? <laughs> are his guards with him? No, these are the uh, guilds. These are the guildsmen's guards. They're not uh, Marcus's. Hey. Uh, he's going to treat Marcus very businessly. What do you have? Like, I'm not here to chat with you. We're not friends. I don't particularly like you. I think you're a scum bag pretty much, but let's do business. Hey, I was not the one who threw a poor man out of the back of a van. Uh, your I guards. you here. Yes. Those your were guards. not... No, th those were not my guards. Those were the other merchants. I was simply trying to run like you. What do you have? Well, I come over to the wagon and I will show you as he leads you over here to his wagon, which is just off screen. Oh, okay. Well, Catherine's going to follow Senek. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, it's not sketchy at all. <laughs> Boy. It's off screen because the DM did did not load it in. Okay. That is why. <laughs> that is an acceptable answer. Um, but as uh, as Catherine's like following Senek, just you know, because she is interested in what he has, if it's anything of actual value, um, mm. she's slipping her blood skin as her breakfast. Mm. Alrighty. Uh, Marcus will open up the back of his wagon, and inside you can see. 
quite the plethora of arms and some barrels, what seems to be full of assaulted pork, some other odds and ends goods, a, quite the heavy rack of javelins inside. As he uh, grabs one of the javelins down and hands it to you, this is quite a weapon, I assure you. You would like this as a as a tool. It it will strike many bandits down. Uh, Chenik would inspect the javelins. That is actually what he's interested in at the moment. Mm. Um, does it seem to be of good quality, of good roll make? The, roll any investigation check. Uh, 15 for 16. Alrighty. Um, so. Could he roll that with advantage? Or... Um. Yeah, you can roll it with advantage. There's two of you there. Uh, okay. I rolled a 19 for a 20. Nice. Looking at the javelin, it, it seems just like a regular javelin. Nothing too fancy about it, but also it, it seems to be decent quality. You know, a standard javelin. It's not going to break like this shit he was peddling before. No, no, this should this should hold up. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, does he have three of them? Three. You think I only have three? <laughs> he pulls down a little canvas cover, and behind him you can see twenty different javelins. Some of them looking a little fancier than the others. Okay. Um, what's up with the fancy ones? Oh, these. These are a specialty one I have. It will cost you a bit more, but I have been assured by some of the priests, not of this temple, but uh, from a foreign one, that these have quite the amazing effect with them. This one, as he grabs it, supposedly is a lightning bolt in your hand. Interesting. What's your asking price? Hmm. Well, you see, I did not get this easily, so I would have to say... No, it's not. It's not Thor's hammer. Um, yeah, it's uh, Zeus's lightning bolt. <laughs> I would have to say twenty-five gold. It's a, it's a simple price, I know, but I assure you, it is it is well worth. Okay. Um, what do you have in terms of armor? He looks about. Um, I'm looking for something. There were men in in higher ranked men than I in, in Byzantium. They had steel plates uh, sewn into their chain mail along their torso. Do you have anything like that? Unfortunately, I don't seem to have any uh, Byzantium armor at all, but I do have this wonderful studded leather. As he, as he flashes a just regular studded leather vest up to you. Well, no, nah, not quite my speed. Um, but I will. He will pay for the javelin. All right, you get the one special javelin for twenty-five gold. And he'll pick up a regular javelin as well. All righty. So regular javelin will be one gold. And you get one javelin. The special javelin, if you want to note that in your inventory as well. And you will spend 26 gold on that. Lovely. Down to 76 gold. Nice. Wow. Nice. And nice. The javelin, from what you can tell, when you throw it, not only does it deal standard javelin damage, it also deals 2d6 lightning damage and has an extra 30 feet on the throw range for this one. So it's that 60 feet? Oh, mm -hmm. shit. It's a lightning bolt. 
You get one, though. <laughs> Does and, it turn back into a javelin if it's thrown? Or is this like a sing Is this more like a scroll, basically? Uh, it depends on the condition of the javelin after it hits its target. Like, how, how beat up is it? How much did it get, like, bent or something when it uh, hit its target? Did deal? you throw it at a rock or did you throw it at a squishy target? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so it's so that's a total of 1d6 piercing, 2d6 lightning? Yes. And then he turns to you, Catherine. Now, I know we did got off on the wrong foot to begin with, or should I say the wrong finger, eh? But I do have something that uh, could be of use to you. If you uh, are looking for a, a very particularly good weapon, I have this proper arrow for you. Just the one arrow? Well, it is a special arrow, but yes, it is indeed. As he reaches back into the wagon, opening up the cloth around a particularly silver-looking arrow, and he holds it up. This specialty arrows has rumors to be able to kill the undead very efficiently. I, I was assured by a hunter in the land of Wallachia that this is a very, very prized arrow. Uh, upon seeing that, um, and Catherine being able to smell it, Catherine will take a step back f uh, from the merchant. What, you don't like my wares? I assure you, this this is an actual proper arrow. Yes. Chenik, please, ch check the quality. I can assure you the quality of this arrow is true. As he holds it up to you, Chenik. Uh, okay, I'll take... I'll look at the arrow, see if it is what he says it is, as best I can. You want investigation? Yes. Okay, advantage or no? Uh, yeah, yeah, you get advantage on it. Okay, well, the first one was a 5. With advantage, however, that's a 12 plus 1 is a 13. He's a little right. less certain this time. So, you can you can tell this this looks to be a genuine silver arrow. You've heard... You've heard rumors that, uh... Vampire hunters use these over in some countries west of you. But it looks to be an actual arrow from them. That is actual silver. That's yes. uh, I, I think it's. I don't think it's. The arrow has pure silver. It seems to be gilded, but it, it would do the fact against, I suppose, a werewolf or something of that sort. Yes. Catherine will let out a um, kind of like a. You guys all know like a vampire hiss, right? Yeah, yeah. So Catherine will let out a hiss, um, and get go from like 0 to 100 where it's like she's insanely agitated you dare mock me with the tools of my own destruction I should have you slotted where you stand Mark is a little concerned about that just kind of like steps to the side where Chanex in between him and Catherine and it's just like oh uh <laughs> If if you don't want it, you, all you have to say so is is you don't want it. I I can try to find something else in the wagon. I, it will take me a moment though to get it. As he very carefully grabs the arrow back from Chenik. Marcus, I want you to know that I won't protect you from her. Mm. And then Catherine will uh will let out like a uh, I guess a sneeze essentially and like kind of like spit it as well and it's like I can smell that silver 
All right, all right. I see you do not like it. I will put it away as he wraps it back up and puts it back in the wagon. I, I see you two do not care for these, this particular wear, but it should be fine. I While we are traveling, I can go through my gear and see if I find something else for you that you might like. As we pause with you guys and head back into the... T inside the guild where the, everyone else is eating quite the nice breakfast eggs bacon even some very nice freshly brewed coffee Yum. Mm -hmm. as the uh <laughs> young assistant who unfortunately got scared shitless yesterday uh is awake and walking around fine helping everyone at the table She, a, a little concernedly, though, uh, ask Dr. Leaf, where, where is your... Is, is your snake friend okay? He, he isn't going to, like, attack me or anything. As she kind of concernedly looks at, at you, Mac. Um, not as long as, um... Give you her a wink, not. Mac. <laughs> he he was just so covered in blood and uh, aggressive yesterday. It just it was terrifying. Uh, yeah, that's the dark side of him. But um, like you said, don't piss him off. Hearing that, she immediately turns over to Mac and gives him a nice large helping of seconds. <laughs> I just grab the plate and keep eating. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you should have given her the wink. <laughs> that would have been funny. Uh, the guild man, as you all are eating, is just kind of rambling through some some information about the town and just talking talking your ears off to a degree as he just is like, well. Uh, I, I know, I know you guys are heading up north, but I, I've heard there's quite the quite the interesting weather we're going to be having up there. As he just keeps going and talking and talking to you, Doctor Leaf. Kind of tuning him out. Mm. <laughs> Meanwhile, seeing that you've uh, are ignoring him, he turns to Anthony and starts talking to you. Well, you see, uh, th this wonderful feast is uh, is quite the bounty. I, I, how do you think it tastes? It's not as good as my cooking. Oh, <laughs> but my God! Oh, yeah, pretty good. Not as good as your cooking. Well, we do have quite the good baker here. He's not a the royal baker or anything, but he's pretty good. It... I must meet this man. I'm sure he he would enjoy meeting you, but I I would assure you do not do not insult the cooks of this land. They they can be quite feisty sometimes. As you guys eat and are able to finish up breakfast within a pretty good time frame, though Clip Clop sim, seems to still be asleep. Sucks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sucks to suck. You guys quickly finish eating as the guildman leads you outside to the wagon with Marcus. Now, we, we must get you going up north. You were able to rest for the day, but if you are to turn back these traveling peasants out of the desert, you, you will need to make haste now. Uh question yes can i so things live in the sand right yes yes okay um with her i guess her sight and heightened senses um you know because her race uh can she like try to find something in the sands yes that that will indeed be part of <coughs> traveling here well, I'm saying before she leaves. Oh, if she like here? here? Yeah. Well, you're you're just in the middle of town. There's not much like living. Okay. 
they're like wild creature wise out here. Okay, that's what I was asking if there would be anything, but I I mean there's some stuff in town like some stray cats. There's at the oasis there's some like lizards and stuff, but nothing nothing too fancy. Got you. Okay. Um Catherine will uh as you know, she sees the 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 main guy come out. Ah, Mason's hopping on. Cool. Um, oh. All right. He's telling, you know, preparing everybody. Oh, really? um, Catherine will turn to uh, Chenick and say, it's okay. We will get you food at one point. Mm. Even if I must hunt it myself. Well, with that, Marcus will beckon everyone. Please jump into the wagon. We we must make haste here. Uh, where, where is your your other friend? Do, do you wish to get him in? Hang on. We need to. Chenik will go back to the room and grab Klipkov by the feet and drag him out of bed and force the wagon. Mm. <laughs> All right. I need you. As you head inside, you see the old man is still there, chained up inside. And Clip-Clop is just resting in bed still. And if you are going to pull him... Ooh. As you grab his feet, Clip-Clop wakes up. Chenik continues to try and drag him off the bed and onto the floor. Hello, mate. Good, good timing. <laughs> Hello, welcome back. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? You, you had a little too much to, to drink last night, and your character was passed out as everyone else has already eaten breakfast. And uh, you wake up to find Chenik pulling your feet as he drags you out of bed across the floor. Rude. <laughs> it's time to wake up. He keeps pulling him to the door. Just, uh, Clip Clop just stands up. <laughs> your feet are in my hands. <laughs> yeah, he's holding your feet and he's like dragging you. Get the fuck off of me. <laughs> are you awake now? I, I woke up and my head hit the floor. Good. <laughs> You're on a sleeping bag. You weren't raised off the floor. Yeah, it was like a sleeping bag, but still. You, but, you drink too much and sleep too hard. It's time to go. We are late. Also, undo your slave's chains. He might be your slave. You might have purchased him. But he is still a man. Undo his chains, please. No, Chinook. The old, the old man happily looks at Chinook. Looks over to you, Clop Clop. His face just deep, deep frown, staring at you. Motherfucker. <laughs> Damn. Is he, is he is not happy, but he. You, uh, as you two are getting yourselves together, and Mason is still being dragged along the floor, you hear a bunch of just stuff happy outside. People loading up the wagon as. You are all beginning to make ready to depart. What the if fuck? You... I don't know get... how to respond to that. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> that was all Siri. Oh, Siri. Gotcha, gotcha. I was wondering, like, what the fuck? <laughs> No, I'm trying to log in to roll 20, and it's... Not letting you? That's weird. Well, she doesn't know how to respond to that. Yeah, she doesn't. <laughs> Siri, roll a 20. Siri, what the fuck is my password for roll 20? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, anyways... <laughs> You're able to stand up, and uh, as as you struggle with standing up, uh, Mason, the old man just kind of looks at you, holding up his arms, still wrapped in chain. Well, are we 
going outside now or not? Yeah, let's go. You guys all head outside and get ready to load onto the wagon. Dun dun dun! Travel time. When Meg did that for me, cut out. So all I heard was. <laughs> I'm glad that's all you heard. Let me find the right map to load in. Ah. All right, there we go. So, you all make ready to head outside of the town, heading as fast as you can, loading up onto the wagon with Marcus. And inside the wagon, there, there there's, there's just enough room for most of you to fit. Two of you, though, will have to ride on the front of the wagon with Marcus as he drives. So, who is calling shotgun? Me. Is he the uh, one that talks a lot? Marcus, the, the yeah. merchant? Yes, yes. Uh, I don't want that. No, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> you do not wish to talk to the merchant. Nope. Hmm? He's the scummy merchant. But who, who else wishes to ride shotgun unless you, someone wishes to sit on someone's lap? Me. Who, you want to sit on Papa Trace's lap? <laughs> <laughs> the old man will also need to fit in there as well, as well as your young, as your young, uh, snake friend, Mac. Dude, let the let the um old slave man. go. We don't have room for him. No. Wizard? Oh my god. Yes. I'm not letting, I'm not letting the wizard go. You're crazy. But should we perhaps purchase a donkey or a camel for some of us to ride mm -hmm. alongside? Good. You you could indeed try to procure I'm getting a weird double echo. Yeah. Oh, my bad, my bad. Uh, you can indeed try to procure a thing of the like, a, a animal, a beast of burden to Ooh. ride. War horse. Suggest an <laughs> animal. Mm. Well, oh, here, overhearing oh, this, Marcus oh, very God. handedly mm -hmm. turns to you, Dr. Leaf. Oh, do we need a uh, riding here? Huh? Yeah, I, yeah. I know, I know a merchant nearby who has some good beast of burden, but for you, I think I have a special one. Uh, Come here, Max. Come okay. here. As a large mastiff dog comes out. I like dogs. Oh, <laughs> a mastiff dog. I like dogs. It's not just, it's not just a dog. It's a mastiff. Um, it's okay. a big dog. Big ball. It's a big boy. It All is right, big so enough for you to ride. <laughs> All right, cool. It's fine. Shouldn't it be like a Great Dane or something like that? No. Given the locality? Um, cool. Marcus, is... on he hearing you ask that, look, this dog was a gift. I, I have raised it here and it has survived pretty well. So I think it, it has adapted to these deserts quite fine. Okay, he's mine. Wow, oh, you do not get to ride him for free. Um, I'm keeping him for free. <laughs> <laughs> it is my dog. Uh, how much you want for it? Oh. Just give her a cane corso. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you can ride my dog. No, I'm for keeping two silver. <clears throat> I'm keeping As he... 
You do not get to keep my dog. You know what? I don't have to come back with the dog, so I'm just going to ride the dog and not bring it back. <laughs> well, he's riding with you in the wagon, so... Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he, um, you can't just get away from him. Well, you know what? I can kill him on the way, so... <laughs> Here's your two silver. <laughs> Very good. I can help you with the murder. As... It... Marcus breaks out a little saddle and puts it on this dog for you. Fantastic. Now, let me uh, help you up as he just straight up, without stopping, grabs you, Dr. Leaf, and puts you on the dog. I'm surprised I didn't fall off on the other side. Uh, make a dexterity save. You bastard. <laughs> You're the one who said it. I know. A 15, 16, 17. Alrighty. You get on the dog pretty well. You don't tumble off the other side. That's reassuring. You still need to free up one space, correct? Uh, that should that should do it. I imagine uh, Hanash, the, the young boy following you, will sit on your lap back. Alrighty. And with that, you guys are. With that, you guys are able to depart the merchant town and head north. So everyone, I need you all to roll a D twenty, just a regular D twenty. You can do it right. in roll twenty even to make it easier. Nine. I rolled an eight. Nice. Everyone's Nine. getting the low rolls today. Except for Treyas and and Respetina. <laughs> mm. Alrighty. So a good spread. A good spread. <laughs> Alrighty. So. Who rolled the one? <laughs> uh, here, Mason rolled two. I'll I'll let you take that first one, the nine. Yeah, I feel like I clicked it twice because I didn't realize it just popped up in the chat box. Mm. So. The ride seems to be going pretty well for you guys. It, it's it's pretty bumpy as you head out of the town. Everyone is... You're not very happy. The wagon could use better suspension, except for Catherine, who seems to be quite fine in the wagon. Yay. And you head out of the town, passing through the protection of Tyr. The barrier that previously saved you out onto the deserts. As you oh, ride, fuck. No. I forgot to craft those ex fire explosion potions. Kid. It's all good. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. But you start making your way north, and the first day of your journey seems to be pretty smooth everyone gets through pretty well and you all are able to travel a decent little distance and you all consume one day's worth of rations and water second day i need everyone to post in the chat whether you wish to go fast normal or slow for covering miles this will determine mm. how soon you get up north and affect your forage rates and everything else um, all righty normal I just realized that we may have a problem. I was not aware that the Acolyte kit only comes with three days worth of rations. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> you, you might have to borrow from someone. Got check that. <clears throat> well, we'll see what we... Oh, 
So let's do a quick tally. Everyone post how many rations you have left after today. Let's see. <laughs> wait, it I looks wait no. Like it I comes might with... never mind. Mm. I got nine as well. Nine. It's, all I saw was rations mm -hmm. one day, but I didn't read the quantity. I have nine of them. Or I had ten of them. Okay. So, I have nine. So everyone has... Yeah, I haven't done it yet. I'm looking. Sorry, what was that, Metal? Uh, so I'm not going to put in my rations because no one can have my rations. Yes. Yeah. They're very unique to me only. You guys would get sick taking my rations. Mm -hmm. um, and you can have two of mine. So Catherine will offer, um, will like offer a blood skin and you can take it if you want. All right. I'll, I'll just well, give you two of mine, Chinook. Well, since you are going normal speed, you can, as you the wagon moves along, hop out occasionally and forage around, looking for possible water, possible supplies. I also need you guys to keep track of how much you are drinking per day. You... You said something special about the the water skins. Didn't they hold less water or more water? Uh, the water skins. The no. first time you made us drink it, it was a quarter of the water skin. Yep, a quarter of the water holds. A one okay, water so... skin holds essentially like four days worth of water. Yeah, it holds four pints. Mm -hmm. So now we're down to three days because we would have filled in the city. Yes, yes. Per one. But you can also stop to forage if you wish as well, if you slow down, to try to find food resources or and maybe some water. Or you can keep going for the second day. I vote to stop and look for some stuff. Yep. <laughs> I vote to stop. Yeah. All right. So is that so? Is that what slow is then? Is slow slower because you're foraging? Uh, so slow, normal, and fast are how much distance you are traveling. Uh, the slow, normal, and fast affect whether you can forage or not, and how effective it will be, as well as your stealth coming into an area. Okay, and so. What are the penalties or bonuses for slow, normal, fast for foraging? Uh, let, let me read it out here. Give me one second. So, uh, fast pace, you move eight miles per day, but you get a negative five penalty to passive wisdom and perception scores and no foraging. Six. You move uh, normal is six miles per day with no effect. Slow, you move four miles per day. Improve foraging, and you are able to stealth up to a situation. So we could continue to move normal and forage. Yes, if you move slow, you get a bonus to foraging and stealth. What's the bonus advantage? Yes. Okay. It. Forging, is that going to be survival, nature? Uh, it's going to be survival. Survival or nature, depending on what you're looking at, but primarily survival. Okay. Uh, Dr. Leaf is, I believe, well-versed in forging, especially for mushrooms. Um... Perhaps we continue to move normal today and try to forage as we go. Alrighty. Oh, so you, you're rolling metal? Yeah. Gotcha. I'm right. going to roll So as everyone, well. if you wish to roll survival, see if you can forage decently. 17. 14. This is being a pain. Uh... 19. Uh, yes, dear. You add a 5. 
All right, 19. 19, already. So, you guys are out foraging as the wagons roll slowly along, heading north. You are able to find some mushrooms going along the side of the road. Seem to be very edible. Not poisonous, thankfully. As well as that, while you are foraging, you are also able to find a apple tree with a few apples on it. Oh yeah. That's a that's a big that's a big I'd like to pie. gather some. I'd like to gather a lot of the apples that I can. Mm. Apple pie. <laughs> you are welcome to try to gather them, but if you wish to fully gather from the tree it will take you it will slow your pace down a bit. Hmm. How many can I get before slow before it hinders me? Or hinders the time. You can get ten. I've gathered ten. <laughs> oh my god. Ryan, what's in the fire potion recipe that I have? Uh the <laughs> fire potion recipe that you wrote down. Uh in the give me one second, there, metal. Is there apples? <laughs> no, no, there's no apples in it. Uh for the fire potion recipe, it is. I wrote it down. Um. Where was it? Sorry, I'm needing to hunt through the proper book to find it. All right, so you need a pint of alcohol. That's it? No, uh, it, you're, it, the post, Just it says... Just drink the booze and, all, and in an instant you'll be immune to fire. <laughs> Just a Molotov. <laughs> Drink the booze and cold can No, um, it's a pint of alcohol. It says a dash of sulfur. It doesn't say how much, but it says a dash. A pinch of potassium chloride. <laughs> no, no, no. A pinch <clears throat> of beetle. And one stone of a dark hue with a note scribbled next to it stating obsidian. What the fuck? Okay, so I'm going to be looking out for obsidian. Yes. And beetles. And, I guess, sulfur. I yes, sulfur yes. We're in the desert while we're going through this. Yes, yes. Uh, as metal, though, you, as you are searching, you find a very... Uh, a sand snake, we'll just say. That's what that's what it looks like. It's a it's a about four foot long snake wriggling its way through the desert. Is that all I find? You also find a a couple just like scorpions here or there. Okay, so I'm gonna take the the any scorpions I do find. Um, and the snake. Alrighty. I need you as you are going to grab the. Are you grabbing the scorpion or the snake first? Uh, probably the snake first. Alrighty, I need you to make a animal handling check. 
All right. The sn as you reach down to grab the snake, it just kind of lets you grab it as it oh. slithers around your arm, just ever so slightly. Okay. Um, as and you're I, able to pick it up. As it as it slithers around my arm, I'm going to pet it and just let it slither around my arm. All right. It's <laughs> it seems pretty content with you. Uh, you also see the pair of scorpions. A little ways away, as they are fighting over a, a uh, particularly warm-looking sun-baked rock. Mm, okay. Um, I will uh, see if I can pick up either scorpion or actually both scorpions and take. Them All right. Away. That will be another animal handling check. But I'm going to make you roll it with disadvantage as you're also holding the snake. That sounds good. Eight. All right. You are, you reach out to grab those scorpions, but the one hand that is already holding the snake just kind of bats the, that scorpion aside as it just kind of gets knocked into the sand and digs its way down. But you are able to grab the other one, though. Okay. I will grab the other one and um, hold it carefully, like, so I don't get, you know... Stung. Stung. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then well. uh, carry back to where everybody else is and walk up to um, Chenik and, like, how, having my head, like, you know, really far down, um, hold up a scorpion and a um, snake and just offer hunger. Jenik, you have been offered food from Catherine, some, a wonderful snake or scorpion. It is your choice which delicious meal you wish to have. Um. He will. He'll indicate a preference. The snake is. They're both. Uh, no longer a threat, right? They're both killed. No, no, no. no they're both alive. I haven't killed them. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, so, the snake, so, I suppose. So to Catherine, she doesn't understand that. So because you know she's very different. So she's like, "Hey, you want this? It's it's yummy. I'm sure." Uh, I'm sure it is. Um, I'll, I'll take the snake. Alrighty. I need you, both of you, <laughs> to, to roll. <laughs> um, could like, is she, you're holding it by the head, right? No, it is wrapped around my arm. Right? No, it's no. just she's just kind of holding it, and it's just kind of wrapped around her arm, and she's passing it to you. Like for it to slither onto. Uh, it, one moment, Catherine. Chenik is going to draw his dagger and <laughs> jam it through its skull. All right, uh, I need you to roll to hit. Damn it! If you miss, I swear to Christ. <laughs> uh, hmm. Well, that's a three for a nine. Alrighty, you you go to swing at this snake and Catherine being a little perturbed at him just, you know, stabbing this, you just kinda of pull your arm out of the way as the knife just misses. Okay. You 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 feel like if you hold your arm out and he goes to swing, he's gonna end up stabbing you. Okay. Is there a way I can just in my hand? Or... Yes, you can. Okay. Um, can I just bite its head off? Uh, <laughs> oh, holy shit! <laughs> yes! All right. Yes! Well, I'm gonna go to bite its head off then. The roll uh, an unarmed strike? Okay. The fuck? Um, or your bite attack, I should Yeah, do yeah, vampires bite attack. Yes, they do. It's 11. 
you bite into its head and it's it's a little tough with the meat, but you do indeed rip its head off as everyone else is a bit concerned upon seeing this. We're outside. Um, with that, uh, Catherine will, um, you know, at, like spit off the head, but then also drain the rest of the body through, from its poison and just gulp it down. Ah, uh, thanks, Catherine. And then, and then hand over what's left of the snake with no poison in it, with no head on it, over to Chenik. Mm. Fantastic. Uh, he'll... Do we have a fire? No, there is no fire right now. Alright. Um, well. You would have to move slowly to make a fire for the next day. And then, uh, hey. like, seemingly, like, kind of, like, annoyed, Catherine would be like, so you don't want a scorpion. Uh, no. No. I'm quite convinced. He will, uh, it's like sushi, right? And he'll eat it raw. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, I need you to make a constitution save. Is this against a poison uh, disease effect? This is just eating like a, a raw snake that just got killed. Yum. Uh, well, that's a natural 20. Ooh. You you feel no adverse side effects. You you don't you don't feel sick at all doing this. It it tastes great even. You know, that's actually not that bad. Use some pepper, but oh well. And then Catherine will, Catherine will start that smirk and nice. Atreus, you you hear the comment? Need some pepper. <laughs> I look I look at him. Eating the snake raw might only need a lot more than pepper. <laughs> Catherine will offer the scorpion that is still alive in her hand to anybody else who wants it. To eat. Does anyone else wish to take up on a uh, a small scorpion? Me. Still alive. Me. Absolutely not. You put that shit in alcohol. So, let it sit there. So, uh, Click crop says yes. Okay, Catherine will yes. the click crop and um, same thing. Having it be alive, just hands it over like, "Hey, have fun." Shout out. All right, let's roll for animal hand. <laughs> yes, let's see. Oh, that's oh. just great. <laughs> <laughs> nice, very nice, very nice. Uh, he hands you that scorpion and. Holding your hands out, ready to catch it, it just kind of lands on your hand and immediately starts crawling up your arm. Like, it is crawling uh, as if it's going to go under your clothes here. All right, I'm going to try to shake my hand and get that thing off of me. <laughs> All right, you like... go to shake your hand, but it, it does not seem to be coming <clears throat> off, and it, it gets under your clothes. <clears throat> I'm gonna an arm strike on the. <laughs> All right, roll a hit. <laughs> roll a hit. Punch yourself. <laughs> oh my god! All right. Wow. Um, I want you to roll your damage as well. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, it says yeah. It says damage zero for unarmed strike. Nice. But armed strike is one plus your strength. Yeah. Oh, because you're negative one strength, so it should it should still be. It it should be one. It should be one technically. So you go to hit yourself. <laughs> you essentially, as you go to get the scorpion off, you just kind of punch yourself instead. And it's the scorpion still crawling around in your shirt and. I need you to make a constitution. 
yeah, a constitution save, because you can feel this crawling around. You're starting to feel a little concerned about it's stinging you. Oh, my you. God, dude. <laughs> You're getting all your bad rolls out of the game. Oh <laughs> Just so you know, I'm pretty sure that scorpion is kind of angry um, because I can talk to animals. Well, can you tell it not to fucking sting me, Kim? Um, I can, can try. Okay, I'm, I'm doing Well, first of all, uh, as you go to help your clip-clop, he, he is getting into a panic. You are now, like, very concerned this thing's going to sting you. So you were just, like, shaking slightly, and you, you are looking for, like, anything to, like, try to crush this scorpion with. And you see... Not too far away from you, a large piece of wood against a rock. You maybe can beat the scorpion to death with. My can I God. just go? Can I just go jump onto that piece of wood and hope it kills the scorpion? Yes, you can. Let's do it. Let's roll a athletic. Uh, that's actually no. It's not going to be athletic. That's going to be. Acrobatics? Yeah, it's going to be acrobatics. This entire time. Thank God, 19. <laughs> <laughs> you jump onto this wooden plank and just crush right down onto it. You hear a squish, but at the same time, you also did land on your back, and it hurts. I rolled a 19, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, you did. You crushed the scorpion, but you also nice. jumped onto a piece of wood. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, you're, your back's just a bit sore. You can stand up, but you, you're going to be hurting for a little bit. Catherine will uh, put her, like, she'll just put her hands in her face and just shake her head and be like, and I offer you a meal. What? <laughs> uh, Dr. Lee. Unfortunately, he does kill the scorpion. As you hear a little, 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 little scream of the scorpion dying. I'm a little disappointed in you. <laughs> what did you want? Yeah, Club yeah. Club is kind of lying on his <laughs> back there in pain with a dead scorpion on him, <laughs> out of breath. Are any of you going to help him up to the wagon? <laughs> nah, that's what he deserves. No. Patriots. I'll, I'll pick him up. <laughs> All right, I I need you to roll a strength check to pick him up. Is he he is he is a do little I, tired. Do I get any disadvantages for my back hurting? Depends if anything happens 16. today. But it it seems you're able to grab him just fine. Pick him up and put him into the wagon. I'm carrying him like a sack of potatoes. Sack of potatoes? Gotcha, gotcha. Well, you... he doesn't get the princess carry. Ah, you know, uh, you're not princess carrying him? No. You're not oh. fireman carrying him? Nope. Just sack of potatoes. Sack of gotcha. potatoes. <laughs> All right. I'm not dragging him on the floor. <laughs> he sack of potato carries you and throws you into the back of the wagon. Mm. Mac, though, you. And looking around. You you don't see too much, but your assistant Hanash he finds a apple that fell from the tree that Atreus was shaking down earlier and harvesting apples from, and hands it to you. Here you go, sir. I found this for you. Thank you very much, bud. As a voice in the back of your mind whispers to you. Feed me. Head north and give me a meal. Thank you, young one. The boy smiles as Marcus turns and beckons you all. Come on, you slowpokes. We can't wait here forever. Get into the wagon and on your, my dog and we will need... We must get moving. Fine. As you all pile into the wagon and head off for the next day of travel. 
Now, everyone, we are on day three. You have all used one more day's worth of rations and water, so please note that down. Uh, Alrighty then. Would Zenik not use his daily rations because he ate the He snake? would not. He would not because he ate the snake. And he he was constitutionally fortified against it. It is not coming back up. Nice. Um. Everyone, I need you to make a call once again. Fast, normal, or slow. Please post it in the chat. All right, we see normal. All right, everyone voted normal. That's good. So, you are traveling along the desert path, heading a little further, when up ahead you spot a wrecked caravan. Everyone, please get your pieces on the board. All right, then. As you spot this wrecked caravan not too further up ahead, and what looks to be a uh, former campsite. Mm. Marcus slows the wagon down, halting it just a little ways away. Since Atreus is riding shotgun with him, he turns to Atreus. I think you guys should go check that out. Make sure it's not a, a trap of some kind. It looks like it could be a problem. You don't need to tell us twice. <clears throat> I alert everyone if they don't see it. Hey, there's a broken caravan down up in front of us. As you all step out of the wagons and start heading towards the caravan. Okay. okay. Um, I rolled for perception 25. Yep. I was going to say, everyone, please roll a perception check. All right, one of my worst skills. Let's go. Yeah, baby. Oh, oh that's not bad. Sixteen. <laughs> no. Good job, Chas. Good job. <laughs> I am oblivious. <laughs> oh, so, um, and then Doctor Leaf, what have you seen? Eighteen. All right. So. Uh, Atreus, you just see a wagon. That's all you see, a broken down wagon. You're just like, hmm, this looks broken down. <laughs> this is broke as fuck. Yes, yes. Um, Good observation, sir. Clip Clop, Hassan, Chenik, you guys, what seems to be a bit of scattered supplies around the wagon, as if it was, like, torn apart, and there's a bunch of what looks to be empty barrels and things around it. You also see that there was a small campsite not too far from it. Cath uh, Dr. Lee, you see that at the campsite there looks to be a pot on top and some ashes as if it was a light not too long ago maybe a day or two perhaps Catherine, though since since you rolled so well uh you as you are looking around you spot a bit of sand that seems to be coming off this northern ridge as if something's moving up there So okay, um, <clears throat> I will call. Uh, I will tell to everybody within earshot of me that there's uh, potential movement to beyond the ridge, and then points in the direction of the ridge. Mm. Uh, as she says this, she will put out. She will pull out her bow and knock an arrow, like showing to everybody else potential danger. Mm. Well, give me one second. Just need to. There we go. 
Upon that, you hear a loud whistle as a man on a camel appears over the dune, looking down. There we go. Chenik will raise an arm in silent greeting. It's testing the waters. The man doesn't does not seem to respond to you raising your arm as he just puts his fingers to his lip and lets out a very loud whistle as suddenly dun 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 and the... um, can, can, since Catherine's already prepared the knock and the arrow, uh, can she get the attack of opportunity in? Or no? Um, since you had a high perception roll, yes. You get one attack of opportunity on the guy you can see. Okay, perfect. Um, do you want me to just do that now then? Yes. Do you want us to roll initiative? Yes, then everyone will roll initiative. All right. Nine. Fourteen, not bad. Fifteen. Seventeen. <clears throat> Damn it. <clears throat> Him is taking the dog out. We'll be back in a second. So ah, gotcha. Uh, sorry, uh, Chenik, what did you say you rolled? A 17. 17, okay. okay. Plus zero is a 17. Does a 12 hit? Uh, it does not. Okay, now I know they're not wearing kind of leather on. sails armor. right past. Night. Okay. And then roll initiative, please. Seven. Seven, okay. And then we're waiting on Dr. Leaf. Sorry, I had to take the dog out. You're good. Oh, Roll initiative. Sixteen. Sixteen already. So, upon... Catherine just knocking an arrow and hey. shooting it off. Hey, come here. Who's he talking to? Um, real quick. Um, oh no, never mind. That's fine. Uh, upon Catherine shooting an arrow and firing off, the man on the camel top of the hill. We'll start riding down towards you, moving a bit down the hill as you see two more approach the top, and you can see another two men on Camelback to your left. First, Chenik, you get first turn here. That's actually amazing. Probably the only time this will happen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> Um, question. Yeah. If I cast less and then we move out of that thirty foot range, do they lose less, or do they keep it? Mm. It should be you keep it. Okay. Because it's an action of like you've cast it, then they are blessed. And it's not like you have to stay within an aura. No, bless shouldn't be an aura one. Okay. Uh, mm. Different in Pathfinder than in Finding. So just check it. Um, so that's one option. But I could also run up. And he's going to run up. That's what he's going to do. Uh, he's going to run up to this camel rider and swing at him with his maul. Hmm. Alrighty. So you get up to that and swing your maul roll to hit? Uh, I should have guessed plus. That's a three for a nine. 
A nine. You do not hit as it just kind of sails right past the camel. The the back side of the camels. The man just kind of sneers as he looks down upon you. Next. Uh, do you have any other actions you can do? Uh, I have a couple spells that will fit within bonus actions. Um, what does Bless do? Bless gives you a 1d4 on an attack row or saving throw. Uh, until the spell ends. Essentially, you get a one-time bonus 1d4 to something. Yes. Well, as long as the spell is active, you get that d4. Yes. Yes. And uh, what does it last for? It lasts, well, it's concentration, but up, up to a minute, potentially. Oh, okay. Essentially, you get this, like, one turn worth of bless. Which you could have you you could all uh, did you use your bless for this attack or did you use it on others? I couldn't cast bless because it's uh, one action, so oh, I just okay. turned into attack instead. Oh, so you didn't cast bless? I thought you did cast yeah. bless. I was thinking about it. Uh, oh, so I you're not, you are yeah. not blessed then? Okay. No. Uh, in that case, Doctor Leaf, it is your turn next. Okay. Shit. Um. Oh well, yeah, I have spells. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm glad you remembered that. Uh, guys, I'm. Oh, I do have a javelin. The furthest um, guy away from you is 65 feet. How many dudes are there? There's five. There's oh, five men on camels. By the way, they're not just. No, no. I'm going to um make a minor illusion as like a cl uh, cliff face, like they're running towards a cliff kind of thing. Where are you putting this illusion? Right in front of them. Uh, the one Which to one? left or? Yeah, left or right. I can't see. Oh, I see him now. Um, the right. You're doing it to the right of you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like past Shenick. Wait, yes. yes, I'm trying to trick the camels into thinking they're falling over a cliff. Gotcha. Okay. okay, so, uh, and that is, is that a cantrip one? Um, yes. yes. Cool. So you make a illusion. Ooh, where's the wall? As a sudden mystical cliff face appears in front of the camel riders to the camel rider to the right of can, Chenik. Can I throw my javelin at him, too? Was... Well, minor illusion, I think, takes one action. That's, that's an action. It minor illusion is an action. Yeah. All right. Got it. All right. Uh, next, then, is Atreus. I'm going to throw my spear at the one next to Chenik. All righty. So, if you need to move to get a better shot, because Mason is kind of in front of you. That's distance. Yeah. Let's see. We'll move 10 feet forward. Should be line of sight. Yep. Spear attack. 24! Damn. Uh, do you crit on just a 20 or a 19 as well? Traits. <laughs> I don't think I crit on my 19. Alright. Just asking because I know that does come up. Yeah, I think that's a uh, champion exclusive ability. Hmm. All right, so you you hit roll roll the roll your damage, sir. Eleven. Oh, mm -hmm. you get a pretty good hit, and as you just kind of hit the guy right on top of his camel, and he just like he was looking like he was going to try to swing down at Shenick, but you just kind of hit him in the shoulder, and he just like slumps over on the side of his camel for a second, but gets up weakly, 
staring at you. And then as a bonus action, I call my food back to me. Oof, oof. <laughs> so. You, you recall it. It just pulls out of him. Not really doing much else, but he is. He feels that as he. Topples from his camel as you do that. Nice. Topples to which side of his camel? He topples to the opposite side from you, to the right. You were on the left side of his camel. Okay. Am I still, is that, am I still adjacent though? Uh, um, the camel is between you now, but okay. yes, you could still reach him. Got it. Okay. Uh, next, it is Hassan. It is your turn. All right. Let's see here real quick. I'm gonna aim for the guy who is off in the distance, right? Here. On the right. Yep. Alrighty. That. Yeah, I'll just start running towards him, and let's. Yeah, I don't really have any ranged spells right now, so I guess that'll just be my turn for now. Alrighty. Do you want a double move? Uh, I mean, I yeah, guess you, I could do could that. Sprint. I don't think about it. You could yeah, sprint. I guess I'll do that. Just get right up to him in preparation for next turn. Alrighty. Um. All right, you have gotten up to him. You are not able to do any other actions, though. Unfortunately, not. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, next, it is going to be Marcus's turn. As Marcus pulls out a hand crossbow. Seeing Hassan charge up the hill, he will fire a shot right past him, trying to hit the guy up there. That's actually good, because I had certain planes in mind for this guy. And he does indeed hit him. Damn it. <laughs> for two damage. <laughs> oh, good. Good. That means As... my plans are still unbroken. Yes. Next... The one one of the bandits will move. He will move. Give me one sec. Okay. So he will over to here. And using his short bow, he will take a shot <coughs> at Atreus, since he just saw you pull a man <laughs> off the horse. <laughs> so he will do. Okay, so his second, sh uh, ignore those rolls, the, I'm trying to do something funky. His first shot will miss, but his second shot will hit you pretty squarely, like right in your back mm -hmm. as he crits. Oh, damn. Yeah, he, he, he hit him pretty hard. <clears throat> Because your armor is a 18. 18, yeah. So, short bow, 1d6, crit. You take. Oh. 
He did not do well damage roll wise. You only take nine damage. All right. <laughs> but yeah, he, he hits you pretty squarely, though. Uh, next, it is going to be. Should be Mason next. The man who fell off his camel. He will get back up as his action. Just and... that provoke? Um. Yes, that will provoke. He is still within range of you, even though he's on the other side of the camel, but you will attack him with disadvantage. Since there is a camel in the way. Okay, I rolled a 13 and a 10. 10 for a 16. You will hit him as he tries to get up, flicking your blade out right underneath the camel's legs. Well, he's I guess he swings his, war his maul. Oh, uh, you're your maul, I mean. Yeah, kind of just through the camel's legs, clips him uh, for a devastating 6 plus 4 is 10, plus 5 is 15 points of damage. Oh, oof. Uh, you hit this guy's legs, and he just kind of gets, like, yeeted 10 feet back from his, ho from his camel and dies. Like, he just hits the sand, and the body's just not moving. Next is the bandit up here. Seeing you have taken out his leader, he will charge you with his spear. Oh, and he definitely does not hit. He just misses entirely on his spear attack. Nice. Sick. Next is going to be Clip Clop. Hey. I am going to cast Green Flame Blade. And go over to this guy that just hit our dearest cook. And... <laughs> Try to hit him. All right, roll to attack. What are you attacking with? Uh, the green flame blade. Okay. I figured out that I had way more spells that I could learn <laughs> because all of the ones that I had learned were from packs. So. All righty. Um. Roll. Um, yes. Hey. 19. You you definitely hit him, and I need you to roll damage. What is the damage characteristic of the green flame blade? Undefined. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a second. Uh, spells damage. I'm looking at it right now. Brandish weapon. You spell casting make a melee attack against one creature in five feet. Hit. Suffers. Weapons attack. Normal effect. Oh, so I cast it on a... On on a oh, so you actually need a uh, weapon okay, okay, to okay. cast it on. I'll cast it on my uh, javelin. Okay, so you're melee attacking with your javelin. Yep. Okay, so you still hit, you roll your javelin damage, and then add 1d8 fire damage from how the spell works. Oh, so I actually rolled a 20. You still hit him. And then... Oops. Are you serious? Uh, Roll just a 1d8, not that, because you can't be getting zero. So roll your 1d6 javelin damage with the plus one pierce, and then a 1d8. Are you serious? 
Why is your javelin damage coming up? Because okay. it's it's one d one d six minus one, and I rolled a one with the javelin, so it makes it zero, and then I rolled a one that, on the d eight. That oh. sucks. So that you deal sucks. one fire damage to him, and then uh, the jump from green flame blade. I want to go at his camel. Sorry, what was that metal? What class are you playing? He's playing a warlock. Okay. Warlocks generally don't use melee. Uh, don't use melee weapons at all. Eh. It's well, it's g- green flame blade. <laughs> still, still, it's it's and fine though. You can use green fire. Yeah. yeah. Or you know, you, you also could just use Eldritch Blast. <laughs> the good old Eldritch Blast. <laughs> Can't go and, wrong with Eldritch Blast, but that's fine. Uh, then the camel's going to take. The second creature takes fire damage equal to your spell casting ability modifier, which is three. Camel takes three damage. Okay. Three fire damage. Yeah. So he takes one. Camel took three. All right. Uh, next it is. This gentleman right over here, he will charge forward towards you, Anthony, with a spear, and he will go to attack. Oh, thank God. He he leans down to try to hit you with his spear, but he leans too far and topples from his camel. <laughs> As he is now on the ground in front of you, lying down. <laughs> <laughs> um... Then uh, the one by you, Max, seeing you approach, will go to swing at you with his scimitar. All right. Uh, 18, does that hit you? Nope, it is one off. Oof. Damn, he's got yeah, he's a higher a, he's AC, AC than 19, me. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, he goes. To, he goes to swing at you, and he it just kind of hits your armor, bounces off. Your your snake scales protect you once again. <laughs> Next, it is going back to Chenek's turn. I never no, I'm, jo- I'm joking. I'm joking. Catherine, it's you. Okay, so um, this this man here is on the ground, correct? Which uh, yes, he is on the ground right in front of Atreus. Um, Catherine will, from seeing this, uh, run over, pull out her daggers, um, and then jump on top of him, creating a grappling situation, and stab him. Alrighty. So, um, so are you trying to grapple him first, then stab him, or? With how that, because he's prone, so, uh... I'll just say, since he's prone, you you automatically are able to get oh, on top. Is he? Does he have the wind knocked out of him because he just flung himself on his own camel? He's or... prone, essentially. So, so you have, okay. he's prone. You are able to get on top of him without a problem, and then go to attack. Okay. So okay, so you don't want me to roll for anything or to, to grapple him then? No, he's prone, so you should be able to just straight get on top. Rolled a 16. All right. That hits. Okay. Uh, that's six dagger. And then the five. So that's 11. There. Um, she will then use her bonus to then bite the guy. Alrighty, roll to attack. And that's a 12. You hit. Okay. So that is a... Four, three, four plus, so that's nine uh, piercing. Alright. So you, you bite into his neck, and he immediately dies upon you biting into his neck. He just... 
Yeah, yeah, you you bite into his neck and he just like gurgles and then just dies from like blood loss. Actually, that does okay. Cool. Fuck yeah. Yeah, you killed him. Good job. Good job. Uh, now it is Tenix turn again. As you see, another two approach from over the dunes, Chenik. Okay, and the guy in front of me is is dead. Uh, the one that you hit is away. The one right next to you on the map is one that it charged you. This is a different one. Got it. Okay. Well, same old, same old. He is going to swing his maul uh, and try and dismount this rider. Alrighty. Roll to hit. Uh, that is a 19 for a 25. Damn. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't crit on a 19. Darn, darn. Uh, but that will be 11 plus 4 is 15 points of bludgeoning damage. Already. So y- you definitely hit that guy, and he just. He goes. Da- he is. He's not dead, but he's definitely hurting. He manages. To just barely hang on to his camel. I but imagine I've broken a couple of ribs. You probably broke more than a couple. Uh, and let's see. Yeah, I think that's... I mean, I have bonus actions for spells that I could use. Um, no, I think I am going to I am gonna do it. Um Alrighty. Just a second here. Bonus actions. Um, he is going to cast... He's going to cast Sanctuary onto... Can I reach him? Yeah. Cast Sanctuary onto Dr. Leaf. Alrighty. Uh, so Sanctuary makes it so that he is uh, warded against attacks. Any creature who targets him uh, with a harmful attack or spell must first make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, On a fail sure. save, they have to choose a new target or lose the attack or spell. Um, if the boarded creature makes an attack, casts a spell that affects an enemy, or deals damage to a creature, the spell ends. Mm. So if Dr. Leaf does anything, catch him. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, with that, it will now be Dr. Leaf's turn, appropriately enough. A fungus friend. Dr. Leaf! Are you there? Yeah, give me a second. <laughs> I am going to... Um... God dang it, had it, now lost it. Um, who has lost um, hit points? Me. I have. Atreus has. He, he, got, he got hit by a crit. <laughs> okay, how far um, away? I'm not far. He's, 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 right, in pain. he's 20 feet from you. Okay. Um, Next to Catherine. I'm going to walk oh. up to him and cure his wounds. Alrighty. And it says... A creature you touch regains a number of hit points equal to 1d8 plus your spell casting ability modifier. The spell has no effect on undead or constructs. Um, all right, what is your spell cast modifier? Ba-da. Dr. Leaf casts using wisdom, which is currently a plus three. Okay, so 1d8 plus three. Yep, give me one second. You hear that, Atreus? A medic has come for you, son. Don't worry. You're 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 receiving Um, medical attention. First aid. It's 10. You heal him for 10. Alrighty. I lost 9 health. You're welcome. You're at full health again. (laughs) As as Dr. Lee just kind of magically hands 
touches you as the arrow works its way out magically and your wound heals up as you just feel fully, fully ready to go again. Yep. Just in time, too. <laughs> yes, it is. Lucky for you, it's just in time. Cut is um, your turn now. Uh, I'm going to run up to the guy next to Chenik, and I'm going to attack with my spear. Alrighty. Roll to hit. Oof, 11. You barely miss, unfortunately. You, you swing, but he's already kind of sagging a little back from taking such a big hammer blow that you just, unfortunately, kind of miss. All right, as a bonus action, because I made an attack, I'm going to push him five feet away with my shield. You're going to push the camel already? Push the camel. Uh, <laughs> is, is there a rule on that one that says only... It just says five feet if I've made an attack. Okay, that's fine. I was no just damage, curious if it just there was a size them. limit on it. It doesn't say size limit. All right, roll. Uh, push him five feet then. Uh, generally, the rule of thumb is they have to be equal to or lesser uh, than what you are. Yeah. Work. Mm -hmm. So if are you, so if it, so most people it, he's pushing the camel. Medium. So that's considered a uh, larger, medium, yeah. Larger medium, but yes. That at that point it's up to the DM. Um, I've seen it go mostly no because it is a camel. Yeah. Um. I will allow you to try to push the guy off the camel. Let's do that the then. Camel. Let's do that then. I'll roll for it <laughs> if you want me to. Uh, uh, the guy is already pretty dazed earlier, so I will say you successfully push him <laughs> off the camel. Jeez. He got hit by a mall, so you know he he is not a happy camper, and he didn't get magically healed like Atreus just did. So you know. And he has legs. He also has crippling depression now, so you know, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> um, all right, next, it is a couple of the bandits. So one of the new bandits, seeing what is happening, will rush down, reach out, and try to grab his friend and pull him up onto the camel. camel. And he succeeds with a crit! As he is able to get his buddy to join him on top of the camel. Stupid camel. Damn camel. Hey Naga, you should just eat one of them. Well, you Already one. working on something. Another one. Okay. The other one over here will move. Seeing what is happening, he will shoot an arrow at good old Marcus. Uh-oh. He misses both shots as they kind of skitter past the fat merchant just landing nearby. Nice. Marcus, a little worried, looks back, reloading his... His little hand crossbow fires a shot and does hit. Goddamn, Marcus. Very and nice, Marcus. For one damage. <laughs> um, next, Hassan, it is your turn. All right. I am going to strike at this guy by me, specifically his camel. going to recite a little chant. And strike the camel with an open palm, casting inflict wounds. Alrighty. Roll to hit. Let's see here. And of course, oh, actually, 11. Alrighty, you hit the camel. Very nice. I'm going to go ahead and roll for damage. 3d10, oh lord. 27! <laughs> That's a so you, hit. You would just kind of slap the camel. Its eyes go white, it starts foaming, and immediately just, like, dies as the rider topples from it. And then could I use my bonus action to make an intimidation check against him? Yes. Very gladly will do so. Let me see here. 20. <laughs> yes, he, he... You 
tower over him, looking down upon this poor bandit, and he he just looks up upon seeing you just tower over him. He pisses himself out of terror. <laughs> he just seeing you just bitch slap his camel to death, and then stand over him. He is just he is yeah he's not happy. Nice. <laughs> um, it is his turn actually. The one you just scared. Let's see if he uh can make a constitution say. All right, he does. He is able to just barely will himself from the fear. Um, he, he will make an attack with his dagger, but he, right. it just kind of glances off your scales. Very nice. Uh, next, uh, Clip Clop. It's finally my turn again. <laughs> Yes. Okay. I'm actually going to be doing something cool this time. Mm. I'm going to cast... I'm going to move... Wait, no, I'm not. Oh, I'm going to cast Witch Bolt using my Pact at this guy over here. Nineteen. Give me. I'm sorry. I'm giving a second. I'm just reading which bolt. Okay. So. There is a guy right in front of you, and you're hitting the guy behind him, or no? Yes, that's what he's. he's trying yeah, to the run. one behind him. I'm gonna. I'll scoot to the side or scoot back to. So you're gonna step back to use it, okay? I was gonna say because this guy's well, right in your face, over, so. Over here. That... Make sure I can still reach that spell. Oh. So... Yeah, Upon you stepping back, he will get an opportunity attack on you. That's rude. But he misses. That's nice. Okay. <laughs> now you can use Witch Bolt. I was gonna say he's in melee, so you would hit with a 19. Uh, roll damage. Fifteen. Alrighty, so you... Your bolt fires out this blast of... Electrical energy just... Hits this man as he judders on his camel for a bit. But is able to stay on. And looking at you, he seems pissed. Well, it keeps shocking. Each yes. of the turns for duration, you can use your action to deal 1d12 of lightning damage. Mm -hmm. But he, he survived the initial shock. Well, that's lame. You'll probably kill him with the residual, but you know. <laughs> um, uh, and, oh, fuck. Yeah, never mind. The one that you stepped away from is his turn. He will... Get up to you again, Mason, and go to swing with his scimitar. Uh, 13. 13 plus 2. So he will hit with one of them. He will deal... Scimitar does... 1d6. <coughs> he will deal 4 damage to you as he lands a cut on your arm. Nice. Owie. Athreen, it is your turn. Okay, so, um, I want to try something specific. Alrighty, what specifically are you doing? Uh, can I charge the guy, the camera rider, who just targeted Clip Clop and tackle him off? Or, like... Yes, you can. I will require you to make a acrobatic check for that one, though. Twelve. Twelve. Hmm. Are you drinking? You, you charge forward, going to knock him off. He doesn't... 
you are able to jump up onto him, but unfortunately, you don't knock him off per se. You're just kind of in his face. Okay. Um, with that, then I'm going to use my bonus and bite the camel. That I'm Alrighty. Just, I'm just gonna pump up the camel at that point. Roll to attack. You hit. Roll damage. Uh, that is six. six. You bite the camel. Is it? It panics a little bit from you biting it, and it's you and the rider both move slightly back. Uh, would that be an attack of opportunity with click club? Yes, but he doesn't have any melee weapons out right now. Okay. An armed strike. <laughs> I punch it. Mm. Uh, yeah, with his negative one damage. <laughs> Instead of Cl doing it, yeah, your frail with his little fist. hands, your heal. frail little hands actually make it feel slightly better, almost as if giving it a subtle massage. Yeah, you, you're the world's best masseuse now, Mason. Congratulations. <laughs> um, next, the writer up here will. Okay. He will move bitch. down here. Seeing that his buddy's being attacked by this weird rug-looking creature. Because all he can see is the massive cloak. Uh, he will go to shoot a couple arrows at you two. As his buddy is screaming, help, get it off, get it off, get it off, get it off, get it off. <laughs> um, plus. He will not hit you with both. And he does not hit his buddy either. He misses. Okay. Darn, 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 darn. Um, Shenik, it is your turn once more. All right. So there's two men on the camel in front of me, right? Yes, there are two men. All right, he's going to step up. He's going to swing at... The injured one is to the backside of the camel. The healthy one who grabbed his buddy is on the front of it. Okay. It is we... a, they are one hump camels, by the way, just so you're aware. Not two oh. hump, one hump. Lovely. And I've, I've hit them both, I think, at this point, right? Depending on how hard you hit them properly. Yeah. Um... Well, no, I've hit them both. I'm, no, you no. Uh, the the guy who is the healthy one okay. just arrived. He, you have not hit him yet. Okay, just his buddy. Then I'm gonna hit the the passenger, the injured <laughs> one. All right, roll the hit. All right, that's a six on the die for a twelve. You just barely hit him. Roll damage. That is 9 plus 4 is 13 points of damage. All right. So this guy, upon seeing his friend get hurt, runs ru had rushed forward, picked up his buddy, was able to skillfully just get him onto the back of his camels. As he's turning to get away, he sees this half-orc step forward with a maul and just clip his buddy off his camel, killing the second guy entirely. Ollie. As he looks back and screams, Jenkins, no! <laughs> I gambled Jenkins. Uh, Jenik will shout, Neil, at him. <laughs> All right, you're fine. Since you're complaining about Jenkins, his name is Jeff. <laughs> Jeff, no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like Jenkins. We're going Jeff. Either his name way is Jeff. Funny. Either way, <laughs> you, you killed his buddy Jeff and just like pulped him onto off of the camel. So he very concernedly <laughs> looks at this massive half orc just killing his buddies. Yield, uh, Chenik will yell at him. Uh, can I make an intimidation check? To... Yeah, I'll allow it. All right. Uh, but that's a sixteen for a twenty. 
the man, upon hearing you say that, will very yes. will put his hands up in the air as he just sits on top of his camel. He is surrendering to you. Good. Uh, next, Doctor Leaf. It is your turn. Finally. Um, a leafy little friend. Is the one above me still alive? Yeah, yeah. He's still up and he's on his camel. Okay, he's up and um, I'm going to cast a poison spray on him. And Is that a cantrip for you, if I remember right? It is. It is. Alrighty. And the range is 10 feet. You are definitely within range. Oh. Okay. And, uh, or, no, he is 15 feet from you, not 10. Okay, then move me a little closer, but not like right next to him. All right, you move up five feet and you go to spray him. Okay. Um, I need to roll a. Oh, no. Uh, the creature must succeed on a constitution saving throw or take 1d12 poison damage. Mm, Alrighty, so. Would that be the camel and the rider as well? Right? Yes, that will be both. I'm going to roll both here. So that is Constitution. Alrighty. So the uh, and it's just one D twelve poison if they don't succeed. Alrighty. So the writer gets hit by it. He takes 11 damage, but the camel oh, fully succeeds. It It's a camel. It's used to putrid smells. It's just like, huh? Okay. What was that? Yeah. <laughs> but the, you definitely hit the rider. Nice. Um, next. <laughs> uh, is there anything else for your turn? Um, no, because I can't do a transmutation. Because they just used this spell, so no. Gotcha. Well, Atreus! I'm going to run up and attack with my spear on this boy. The one who's surrendering. Gotcha. Yeah. Alrighty. No mercy. Roll it! <laughs> Get... I'm just going to move you there. 24. Not, not a crit. You hit. Roll damage. Eleven. You hit him as you just run up, stab him as he has his arms up, and he lets out a scream of pain upon, <laughs> you know, he thought he was going to be fine, and you just stab him anyways. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> um, is there any other actions you can do or no? Is that all? That's all I'll do. Wait, you aren't going to, like... Push so him I, with your shield? I read up on it. I can put him in prone with my shield mm -hmm. as the shove action, like with the shield shove. Ah. But that requires him to either do a strength or dexterity save okay. check versus my athletics check. All right. You wish to do that. Yeah, let's, let's put him prone. All right. I roll athletics. You get to choose between athletics or acrobatics. Uh, for you? No, I I do athletics. You choose him whether he's oh, athletics athletic, acrobatic. or okay. acrobatics. Uh, he will do athletics. He will do his dex. I got six, so he got a ten. Yeah, he won. <laughs> so he, he you so try to push him off as he kind of like <laughs> grabs the spear that's embedded <laughs> in him and like refuses to be pushed off his camel. <laughs> Man just wanted to go home. <laughs> He's got a wife and kids, bro. Why you he do was this? surrendering. <laughs> he attacked us first. No this, mercy. This is literally a war crime. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, hey. Geneva Conventions haven't been invented yet. So. Plus, the Geneva Convention is just a suggestion. You also yeah, got to keep in mind I'm a gladiator cook, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You it didn't give him, no, he did there's give no him, such look, thing look, as look, surrender no, in no, my no. Did I have a better way to put it. The guy didn't give him two thumbs up since he's a gladiator cook, guys. Come on. He had to give him two <laughs> thumbs up to live. <laughs> History jokes. Yay. Anyways. Um, next, it is the writer that 
Clip Clop zapped earlier. He goes to move, but then takes six electrical damage as he goes to move on his camel. It shocks him violently as he like spazzes and then falls over dead. No. One kill. There you go. Mark it down. Um but are you really counting again? Uh next, Hassan. Of the course guy not. you tried to intimidate went yeah. to attack you and just hit your scales. He is not he he seems to be like he he's soaked in piss and seems to be crying a little bit, but is still fighting you. What do you wish to do? <laughs> oh I am God. going I am going to constrict him. Alright. Uh since he is terrified, I will just say you constrict him. Alright, I'll deal the 1d6 plus 4 damage, and then he will be uh, constri uh, constrict, I mean, uh, restrained, and what's the word? I'm sorry. Grappled. Yeah, grappled, yeah, grappled and restrained, that's what it is. Alright, uh, roll damage. Alright. Seven, and if he's still alive, I'm going to be pulling out my longsword and chanting in preparation for a sacrifice. Mm, he is indeed still alive. Alrighty, he really starts bawling upon seeing you do this. Oh, He's just boy. like, oh god, oh god. He's very intelligible, inintelligible right now from his words. Uh, Imagine trying to attack a random group of travelers and you get constricted by a massive snake who then prepares you for sacrifice. And then, yeah, and then sacrifice to a literal demon god. <laughs> um, Marcus, upon seeing what is happening with, <laughs> with the snake, will turn, look back at the rest of the party, look over to Dr. Leaf. The hell are your friends? <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? The hell are your friends? Because he's seen Hassan grapple and then looks like he's th he's saying very weird words. He's about to sacrifice this. And he just saw a man surrendering get stabbed in the back. <laughs> um, um, this oh, is normal. Don't <laughs> Everything's oh, fine. Oh, and the vampire attack, yeah. yeah. Get, get um, uh, like... My friends are normal, I swear. They're normal. He raises an eyebrow at that. <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> they are normal. Sure Persuasive they are. Role. As and he I, says I'm that, he to... finishes reloading his crossbow and shoots <laughs> at the guy behind you. Oh boy. He hits. Hey. He deals one damage. Whoa! Nice. <laughs> he is not rolling well for damage. Just barely glances off him. He still hit him, though. Yeah. Uh, what were you going to say, Dr. Leaves? That's my train of thought. Mm -hmm. Well, it should be in the station soon, hopefully. Uh, next, <laughs> it is Clip Clop. It is your turn. What are you going to do, Mr. Clip Clop? Miss. Damn it, that went way over my fucking head. I'm switching card <laughs> for Um, Catherine's still over there. Catherine is basically on top of the guy, so you have to be kind of careful. Ugh. And she's just covered in blood at this point. Yes. Well, I'm, I hope so, there's a laundry service where we're going, you know. I'm going to go and cast Eldritch Blast on <gasps> this guy. On uh, which one? This one. Oh, the north. All right, so. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's see it. Let's see this blast. 16. You, you indeed do hit. Uh, what's then one d ten force damage? Does the spell attack my spell attack bonus? Does that apply to that? Uh, spell attack bonus applies to your damage as well. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm stupid. I've been doing, uh, I've been doing spell damage wrong. So that's nine. Wait, how have you been doing it? I've been not adding the five. Oh. To your uh, spell ability modifier. Oh, I, I see what you're doing. No, no, that does apply to the initial hit. Well, the five I have applies a... to the hit, not the damage. And then the damage is its the spells one. I thought you meant for something else. Well, I have a I have a three modifier. It says plus three modifier plus five spell attack. Yeah, I knew so the... the I knew the modifier applied to uh the roll to hit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the hit. Yeah, the, the the plus five goes to your to hit. So what's the plus three do? Um, the plus three goes to. Does that uh, go to the damage or no? I don't know how that, spells work. That, that should go to your damage. Yeah, the three should go to your damage. Sorry, my bad. So five goes to your hit. Three goes to your damage. Okay, so seven. So you would have hit him. Then it would be uh, the the one d ten plus three, so seven. Yep, Wait. you indeed hit him with Eldritch Blast. Be Eldritch Blast on a hit, the target takes one d ten. No, I I did a reroll for him to make sure it was functioning. That's why. Okay. He did a sixteen originally. I was I was rerolling that one separate. Okay. That was DM. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you you indeed hit him as he. Just blast off the horse, and uh, it's forget is he takes one d ten force damage, which is force damage. Okay, I was seeing if there was any other effects with it. Uh, yeah. So yeah, he yeah he gets blasted off on his camel and just kind of feeling that gets just gets knocked off the the body gets flung off the camel so he just flies back a bit you're not sure if, how he is but his camel starts to run away see so he's just kind of lying in the sand not too far from dr leaf uh, next the guy you are attacking metal he will scream very loudly get it off get it off me as he Tries to like just grab you with his hands to throw you off. Huh. Okay. Um, let's see. He will. That one was definitely miss. He he does. He just kind of flails his arms. <laughs> okay. Oh, it is reaction. your turn, Catherine. Well, hold on. In reaction to him completely missing, she will slash out and deal six uh, slashing damage with her claws. Her opportunity attack? Uh, no, it is her. It, she has a reaction. Oh, you have a reaction. Okay. Uh, roll, roll to hit. Um, it's a auto hit. Oh, auto hit. Never mind. Uh, you did six damage. All right, you as, claw him a bit. As long as it is within five feet, she has a, she has that, and the Already. requirement is met. So. Well, it is indeed been met. So you, you hit, and then it is your turn again. So after slashing him up a bit and him flailing his arms about, she will um, try to charm him to... Charm, all right. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> all right, 20. Oh, you, you have definitely charmed him as he just kind of... Just stares. His uh, eyes going a, like lolling a bit as he just stops failing, just looks at you. Okay. He uh, will. She will then uh, lean in and uh, chop on his wrist. He he lets you do it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, he must make a uh, saving throw. Con. Uh, Constitution. Okay. Correct. Constitution. He does not succeed it. Okay. Um, so she then gets off the horse and, I mean, the camel and like, lets him, lets him be. 
backs off, like full on, just lets him lets him go. He just kind of sits on his camp camel, a bit slumped down, but just sitting there. As he as he kind of just stares a bit off. Um. Right. She Next. Will, oh, okay. So as oh she, no, you're good. As she climbs down, she will then uh, speak out. Yes, come to me, my child. Alrighty. Um. Give me one sec. All right. So hearing you say, "Come to me, my child," he will turn. <laughs> Take a step forward, not realizing he's still on a camel, and fall off the camel towards you. Okay. <laughs> he is face first into the sand, but he is towards you. That would be my whole turn. Yeah. Uh, Chinnick, the guy closest to you will, you and Atreus, will make an attempt to flee, though, as he has been stabbed to the back with the spear. As he runs forward pull the spear is still kind of stuck in him i need you to make a strength check anthony to see if you can hold him Sixteen. you are able to hold him he he urges the camel forward and you just kind of jerk him off the camel pulling as him he down runs away ground. and i pull him back i yell face me well, you, you indeed do that, because he, uh... <laughs> takes a tumble off the camel as the spear is still embedded in him and falls to the ground before you guys. And with that, combat is over. And then I will just sacrifice this man. Because How are you? Alright. You, you just essentially smite this this boy. Just to appease my little friend. The one with the little. voices? Possibly. Oh boy. Don't he, make fun of him. He a... dies as his blood seems to boil as you kill him. It Ooh. His body contorting a bit. As it then disappears into the sands as if eaten by something. And in your back of your mind, you hear a whispering voice. Good, but I still hunger. Very well. And then I will just move over and rejoin the group. <laughs> just casually, <laughs> oh, you know, guys, hey. Yeah. Oh, I ignore the voices in my head. How's everyone doing? All right. Gather up the dead and burn them. Uh, Chenik will uh, grab hold of the living captive that we have. Um, the, okay. the one, yep, the one by metal. There is one injured one by you guys. And then, Dr. Leaf, there seems to be one in front of you if you wish to poke him or figure out what's going on with him. Um, yeah, I'll poke him with a stick, or my spear. Alright. You poke him with your spear. You hear a soft groan. Uh, stop, <laughs> I give up, please. Uh. He's still alive. Um, I say we just leave him here. I walk up to the man with my javelin drawn. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Hey, you already know what I'm doing. You already know what I'm going to do. Uh, oh Green will here. actually step in front of the snake and tell him not to touch this man. Thank you. I walk up to the man with my javelin drawn. God damn it. Uh, Kathleen will try to defend... This you man. keep it up, and I'm gonna that cast is... hold on your ass. <laughs> this man. I rolled an eleven to hit him right in the forehead. With the no, what? No, 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 <laughs> no. No. Does this okay, hit? Just... Hey, wait. <laughs> no, I'm gonna cast hold on your ass. I'm gonna just glance over at you and just gonna tell her, 
You're you're making a big fucking mistake right now. Who? I'm not a girl. Uh, no, nah, not you. Oh, okay. There's two Catherine. different set situations. Catherine, yeah. Um, Catherine will pull the man back with her, and tell uh, and and uh, grab his wrist and put it like and show. Do not touch this man, for he is mine. I have claimed him. Oh my god. Ryan, I, I rolled an 11 know. to hit the man on the ground that I shot off his camel. Do I hit? <laughs> <laughs> he, he's prone. Roll with advantage. Yeah, roll with advantage. Roll again. You roll another hit. <laughs> the first one, I'll tell you what, miss. 20. That hits. <laughs> you stab him. That's a great Roll damage. No, never mind. That's a nice If oh, you're. Oh, make, you roll, let's see if you oh. heal him or not. <laughs> you bastard. Three. Three. three you, plus, you take plus, your javelin. Just walk up to this guy. Uh, see. I think what, green what? blade is still active. Yes, it is. So. Er, and you're, you're killing him either way. Um, well, I want him to catch. I want him to catch on fire too. Yeah, we monster. need to burn the body so they don't become a dead. He's not wrong, even though he's not dead yet. He's not wrong. Oh boy. Um, but yeah, he looks up to you. Please spares you just like stab him, like right in the throat, and he dies, and Dude, then his body catches on fire. We could have asked him so many questions, you asshole. There's still we could... two. We still have a charmed one. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, this... Someone's trying to eat. Yeah, okay. No. He's mine. We have one we have one impaled on a spear. Yeah, he's <laughs> sacrifice him. Like... Uh Chenik will address uh the man who surrendered, who was then stabbed, and who is now <laughs> prone. Uh and he has by his okay. hand. He will um remove the spear. And well, to Treus' spear, Treus is holding onto the spear still. <laughs> you have to remove him from my spear. <laughs> Atreus has to let him go. Atreus, things he's are all... getting a bit chaotic around here. He's no use to us dead. I have him. He's still holding onto my spear. He is not letting go. The, the man like meekly lets go of the spear of the spear that's embedded in him. The, the the poor surrendering man. Let's go. Letting you pull the spear out. Yep. I walk up to the man impaled with my javelin drawn. <laughs> no. 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 Stay away. My prisoner. My prisoner. Stay away. Uh, Chenik stands up, bloody ball in hand. Stay away. We bleed into the same earth, and bleed we must. Step okay. Back. No search the wreckage. Make yourself useful. Stack bodies. Burn them. Leave me alone. Stay away. <laughs> I'm just going to walk around poking all the dead bodies with my spear so they catch on fire. Uh, Shenik is going to lay on hands to this prisoner. All right. Prisoner gets five hit points. All right. He The wound slightly seals, but he still... Decently hurt. Um, Still pretty decently hurt as he just looks up to you. Why? You, why? Why oh, save me? Because I must know, why did you attack us? Well, we needed. We needed your money. How else are we supposed to live out in these cruel lands? We needed supplies. Is that what you did to this caravan here? He points to the wagon. The man kind of shamefully looks to the ground upon you saying that. Understand this. I grew up a bandit. This is what we did. We set traps and we laid waste. But it is... There is no way forward. We can't continue like this. Look at how your friends have ended up. He kind of meekly nods, but just keeps looking at the ground. A little disappointed in himself, even. 
I understand that this is the way life is, but this is also a choice. And as you are talking to him, Atreus p gathers all the dead bodies, piling them up to be burned as Club Cop stands by with his nice flaming pointy javelin to set them alight. <laughs> as Dr. Lee kind of concernedly stares at this happening, and Marcus is well next to her, just being like, what the hell? <laughs> I offer you a choice now. Turn away from this life. You can do this by coming with us, or there is a city not far from here. Go seek refuge there and pledge yourself to the Temple of Tyr. The man nods at that, stands up. I will head there. I will pledge myself to tear. I see what you are and what you are from <laughs> to my friends. I will I will head there as you say. Just l let me grab one of my camels and I will I will depart. Please do so. There is a uh, subaltern there. Uh, he will guide you in the way of tear. Good luck. Mm. One of the camels that is loot, uh, his camel that ran away earlier has come back to him as he grabs the reins. Looking at over at Atreus as he sees him piling the bodies as, as Clip Clop is cutting pinkies off of them. Hey. <laughs> He he will he will look to you, Chenik. Uh, I I do not vouch for this behavior. It is all right. I I see there are always some some people somewhere that are that can be like this. I just pray that you in turn are able to. I I will pray for you at at the city to tear for your own protection. As he gets on the camel and goes to ride off. Towards the town. Lovely. You have right. saved one person. Congratulations, sir. Hooray! <laughs> and everyone else was out of the party of murder hobos. One person has been a good person. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. I like it. Um, I tried to save people, but people just keep fucking murdering. I didn't try to the, murder your charm, dude. The guy who's charmed by you, hearing you say, hearing you say, I've tried to save people, look, will look and just kind of blankly nod. Just, yes. Well, no, okay. Correction. <laughs> Catherine is still standing between this, uh, Hassan and the man. Hmm. And firmly, firmly denounced that should anything happen to him, you will pay the price. I walk up to the man with my javelin drawn. <laughs> He's in spear throwing range. They should... <sighs> Catherine will announce very loudly should anything happen to him, she will curse them. Mm -hmm. she, has this claimed, is... she has claimed this man. And he like has that. indeed claimed him, yes, yes. I think this is interesting because on the one hand, we have the typical murder hobo party, but we have two individuals who are both attempting to claim people to their cause and turn them to their cause. Correct. Yes. But they are both opposite causes. It's very <laughs> interesting. Well, Ryan, look what, well, I, look what extent, I rolled, Ryan. To an extent, um, my, my cause isn't really just or unjust. It's just more an unnatural pathway right. of doing things. That's all it is. All right. Uh, Mason, I, <laughs> I know you want to roll to hit, but um, your your javelin seems to be um, wait so a, a little burned, a little too burned, as it it seems to be crumbling a bit in your hands from you rolled a fire nat too twenty, long. by the way. I rolled a nat twenty, right? <laughs> I know. Oh, okay. I, then I, I he saw. Dies. He dies. That's it's fine. He dies. I tried. All right, so you do stab the man as he catches a light, and he just kind of longingly looks over to you, Catherine. 
a small tear rolling down his cheek as he burns. Catherine will... That is so fucking awful. Catherine will utter a horrifying <coughs> shriek, but... almost, like, completely precludes herself and seemingly just, uh, like, watch the body burn at that point. Three kills, baby! <laughs> okay. Uh, um, give me one sec, doing something. I walk over to Chin with my job. You are no, really, really close really. to being really, murdered really, in really, his really. sleep. All right. no, at this point, he's going to be murdered in his sleep. <laughs> <laughs> There's only so much of it that's actually amusing. But... Anyways, um, Mason, um, upon you, you are trying to see what, what, what is your alignment, Mason? I'm trying to look it up. You're lawful evil. Okay. You're evil. All right, I was just trying to see what your alignment was. <laughs> they were murderers, or they were bandits who killed those two people over there, so they deserve to die. So, wait, your alignment is lawful evil? What's your, um, what's your law? Or your code? Just curious. My code? Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, like what, what? What laws do you pertain to for be for your being evil? Like, you, what rules do you follow? Because, because, because otherwise that would be chaotic evil. Yeah, I was about to say, if, um, doing this act will mark you as chaotic. Will change your alignment to chaotic evil. At this okay, point. I'm I'm fine with that. All right, your alignment is now chaotic. Brothers in chaos. Oh, no, I'm chaotic neutral. Sorry. Well, oh, now yeah. you're chaotic evil. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, murdering yeah. prisoners is not... You don't get to stay neutral with that. Nope. Yeah, like, you you just do, doing that, cutting off pinkies, you, you, your alignment shifts to chaotic evil as you feel a, a dark... dark thoughts start penetrating your mind more and more in the future. Bizarre. God so, it, dude. Oh. I was going to say, Divine Sense would let me know that, but it doesn't. I'm reading yeah, it, and yeah. that's just Celestial Fiends and Undead. That's yes. weird. Um, it wouldn't um, for one uh, thing, party. One thing you could do is you could actually do an insight check um, on the player himself and go, oh, after witnessing him just, you know, cut down, you know, prisoners at that point, you'd be able to do an insight check to see if uh, you can, you know, sense... Like, hey, does he enjoy this? Or, so, I mean, there's ways around it. True. I was just thinking it would be like, um, like in, in Pathfinder, there's detect alignment, um, which is what I think Divine Sense was, but it's it's not. Oh, I got you, I got you. Okay. Um, Catherine will then just regroup with the rest of everybody else, because... Um, let's, let's check the wreckage, um, see if there's anything of value. Uh, Chenik will enlist Dr. Leaf in trying to help him gather the camels. Fine. I will talk to the camels. <laughs> Alrighty. I, Lorax, I talk, I speak for the trees. Pretty much. Right, yeah. One of the camels is going to be pissed because I slapped it with the shield. Who fucking dare. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. I no, I already did. I will teach. Um, I will teach every single one of these fucking camels to spit on you. <laughs> oh, those are alpacas, so you know. I mean, camels, camels do it too. Hard. Nice try. Yes, I know. I'm just messing with you. But anyway, good job with the combat today. Yay. That sh should be a game. Yay! Uh, I like a bit of a sacrifice. What the hell? Oh, hey. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. I was just saying, um, good job for the campaign today. You had a good run in with bandits here, and we will end it here today and see where we pick up next. And we time. became genocidal. Let's not forget some, that. Some, some did. Not me. Yeah, especially me. Yeah, we know. Wait, wait, <laughs> wait. What's this we committed? Mm. <laughs> Who's this we? <laughs> Who is this we that you speak of? About the wee part, but some people. Good job, Mac. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> but um, will next Saturday work for everyone for the twenty yes. fifth? Yep. Same yes. time if that works, ten o'clock, and uh, yeah. Let's see. Yep, works for me. Cool. Cool. Not in the morning. Oh, you have duty. Yep. Shit. Uh, I can still do it even if you're gone. I can. Yeah. I'll <laughs> I'll figure something out. Uh, cool. Well, we will plan for next Saturday then for the next one. So please jot that down on your calendars. Yeah. Set your alarms. Yep. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Hey. <laughs> Oops, me. Good game. Alrighty. It's come to my attention that this is the end of the video. Well, if that is the case, go like and sub. Bye.